In 1962, French fashion designer Yves Saint Laurent would open a luxury fashion house under his name that would go on to become one of the world's most famous and reputable design brands. Laurent, born in 1936 in Algeria, would spend much of his early years designing fashion and with time would be introduced to many large names in fashion back in the 1950s and the 60s. His experience in the field would ultimately culminate in him developing a unique and long-lasting style that still remains at the top of the fashion hierarchy until today. One reason Laurent became such a major name in fashion was due to his uniqueness. He pioneered many different luxury trends that would catch on and become major parts of our modern world. Things such as artistic clothing and the woman's suit would all be due to his influence on design. So with that said, let's take a look at some of Yves Saint Laurent's most influential collections. The first collection I'd like to look at is one of my personal favorites from Laurent's early works, the Mondrian Dress. As the 1960s rolled around, women's fashion was becoming a swiftly shifting field, and by the 1970s it would be very different from what it once was. In the 60s, one very popular trend was an evolved version of the sack dress. For context, the sack dress is a woman's gown that goes straight down from the shoulders to the hemline. In the 60s, the sack dress was a very boxy garment cut shorter than years prior due to the fashion trends emerging out of modernist France at the time, and they were generally worn in solid colors. Laurent would see this as a great opportunity for innovation due to the simplicity of this canvas. The name Mondrian comes from Dutch painter Piet Mondrian, a designer who would construct the graphic theory of neoplasticism, a reductionist approach to color and its use in design. Laurent's iconic cocktail dress line would take influence from Mondrian and attempt to reconstruct his works on the modern human canvas. He wanted the dresses to be dynamic, moving pieces, the straight cut, sharp edge black borders that hold each primary color and frame contrast nicely with the structure of the female silhouette, and through this, Laurent would take something very simple and commonplace and add a layer of extravagance to it. The fact that he was able to take such a form of artwork and relay it in fashion is impressive on its own, and it's no wonder why the Mondrian dress would be such a revolutionary piece. A year later, with the same creative mindset, Laurent would create another very influential line of garments, his Autumn Winter 1966 collection. These garments were inspired by the then arising world of graphic pop art. This collection featured bright, popping colors that contrasted strongly with each piece, and each gown was very much the same structure. However, where these truly differed from the standard unicolor gowns of the time period was in their patterns. This collection was arguably one of his most unique ones, as he took the artistic style of pop art and directly portrayed it via fashion. Simple monocolor faces and shapes allowed for these sets to stand out and make a bold statement. They were fun and light hearted yet still conveying an air of elegance that can be seen across Laurent's entire career. The safari jacket was a rather interesting concept, and it worked out beautifully. The jacket, and this is what makes it so unique, took strong inspiration from the uniforms of World War II era African expeditionary forces, and the inspiration is clear. These jackets resembled the clean cut formal military style, but redone to be worn in a completely separate environment. At first, the jacket was meant to be a one time design, meant for a vogue Paris fashion show, however, it would see immediate widespread fame. Although it debuted in 1967, by 1969 it was made as a ready-to-order piece and it would fit in well with the fashion styles of the coming decade, including the men's leisure suit and the popularity of shoulder-strapped military-style shirts, the safari jacket would find a home for its bizarre but sensible concept. Let's go back a little to Laurent's very first collection in 1958. While still working at the House of Dior, Laurent would open his first line to incredibly positive reception with a unique play on the defined style of Dior's works. Instead of sticking to the traditionally cut silhouette, the young designer would create a wide open shape for what was the trapeze line, dresses made with lesser fabrics but opened up wide around the waist, creating a very strange and one-of-a-kind look that would catch the public's eye and launch his career into the world world of high-class fashion, and it's no wonder why. 
Of course, as with any famous designer, creativity is occasionally ahead of its time, and Laurent would see this with his 1960 collection while still working at the House of Dior. The line was what we call today his beatnik collection, the phrase beatnik coming from London's left bank rebellious youth culture in the 1960s. Of course, it's clear why this didn't catch on in the luxurious House of Dior. Laurent, attempting to ignore the conservative nature of high-class fashion, decided to take influence from a class of society completely alien to it. He believed this concept would receive high acclaim, as it brought together two very clashing worlds. He would make very heavy use of dark colors like black and deep browns, and plenty of leather. He even proposed the leather jacket as something of a couture nature to his audience, an idea that wouldn't be taken seriously until the following decades. The rebellious, bizarre nature of this lineup was taking it too far for the House of Dior, so much so, they would essentially turn on Laurent due to this. They refused to contest his compulsory army service the same year, and on his return from the military, he would open his own fashion house as a result. Yves Saint Laurent is truly one of the world's most widely known fashion designers. His brand has been a staple name in the world of luxury since its very conception, and it's not hard to see why. His style as a creative and unique designer would lead to a major shift in the world of fashion over the coming few decades, and would earn him a spot at the top. He was an inventor, and when given the opportunity, he invented. The world of fashion would never be the same following his introduction, which was characterized by his very forward-focused style and to this very day, Yves Saint Laurent has continued to be one of the most powerful names in the artistic world.